So when you pray and say, Father, increase me, change my story, it's important to know how God answers. The very common way of God answering, if it's not something that requires a supernatural manifestation like healing, most physical results, physical testimonies are answered by God releasing the graces that attract them. The graces that attract them. There is a grace that can attract the resources you are praying for. There is a grace that can attract the finances. There is a grace that can attract whatever it is. Looking for it is a waste of time. You receive the grace and it draws it to you. Say amen. amen. The final way God answers prayer is through the ministry of men. The ministry of men. The ministry of men. 1 Samuel 10, 26-27 first samuel 10 26 27 someone's prayer life is becoming richer because you are learning now how god answers prayer and saul went home to gibeah and there went with him i like this when i was studying preparing for this my god this scripture i've seen it before but it came with light it blew my spirit watch this and there went with him a band of men read the last sentence whose hearts god had touched whose hearts God had touched. 27. But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? These were the ones whose hearts were not touched. And they despised him and brought him no presence. Give us amplified, please. Same scripture. Amplified. Same scripture. Go to 26 again. Saul went home to Gibeah. And the Bible says, they went with him a band of valiant men whose hearts God had touched. Nobody follows you until God touches their hearts. Nobody helps you. When you see a man coming to assist you, the Bible says this is a mystery that God had touched in their hearts. I think his promise, who says it when he's taking the offering? He says, may God put your name in the hearts of men. This is what he tries to say. Verse 27. The Bible said, but some worthless fellows said, how can this man save us? This is what you get when God does not touch the heart of men and they come around you. They will despise you. He says, how can this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no gift. But he held his peace as if he was deaf. Men whose heart God has touched. Father, I'm praying that you bring me out of this calamity. You know how God answers you? When he grants you those graces, you will touch the heart of someone. Oh, happy is the man who meets a man whose heart God has touched. They will do things as if they are under the influence of a charm. Where is your mother? Where is your father? Tell them I will start helping you every day. I will be sending one, one million till December. It is my contribution to this family. No strings attached. And you are even afraid. There are men whose heart God has touched. God can touch the heart of royalties. God can touch the heart of men of influence. Do you believe this? Men whose heart God has touched. Every man of God needs to pray this prayer. Nobody has members. You only have those whose heart God has touched. Nobody follows you just because somebody is with you for many years does not mean they are with you. Men whose heart God has touched this here is the secret of loyalty is the secret of commitment is the secret of genuine connection whether for ministry whether for business if you are a leader here here's your prayer point for this week go and pray father touch the heart of man for my sake i've taught you numbers chapter 1 and verse 5 these are the names of the people who shall stand with you who shall stand with you who shall stand with you not everybody stands with you the jesus you love so much there are people who despise him because their hearts have not been touched it is amazing how you can be a champion to someone and you can be bilial to another person depending on whose heart God has touched. So don't be surprised when people despise you while others are celebrating you. I think it's something preachers are having a hard time to understand. How could somebody celebrate you, honor you, love you, serve that grace, and then another person despises you so harshly? Unfortunately, it is not every man whose heart has been touched for you. It is your assignment as a man of God to say, Lord, all that you have given me, touch their heart. 
don't make a mistake of thinking that as congregants sit down and look at you as a man of god they are truly connected if god does not touch their heart they can be with you for 10 years and one day they will say crucify him and go to bed while you are on the cross did you hear what i said pray for everybody in your house oh, house help security people whatever god touch their heart if not the day somebody comes to say look oh can you help me and kill this man ask judas judas was with jesus but his heart was not touched you need to pray leaders pray for everybody within your circle those who play pivotal role god touch them touch their hearts let them be loyal indeed committed indeed spouses pray for yourselves one for another so that there's no falsehood and deception pray for yourself give us that scripture again saul also went home to gibeah and there went with him a band of valiant men men whose hearts god has touched your destiny helper comes under this category are we together have you read a very interesting story in the bible we're about to pray that story is found i think in luke chapter is it luke chapter 10 from verse 29 to 36 just write it for reference Luke chapter 10 is the story of a man called the Samaritan have you heard the story of the good Samaritan so I will quote it quickly for time the Bible tells us that there was this man read verse 30 Jesus now is explaining that there was a certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho he fell among thieves please look up and they stripped him of his garment they wounded him and they departed leaving him half dead everybody say half dead and there were three people who were who came to the life of that man the most likely people did not help him number one was a priest the priest came when you read the verses a priest came and saw him and went away as if he did not see anything number two a levite came people of consecration came and saw him and passed on but then number three a man whose heart god had touched the bible said a certain samaritan when he saw him he had compassion upon him and what did he do in response to the compassion 34 he bound his wounds he poured oil he poured wine he set him on his own donkey he brought him to a hotel and took care of him and he went further verse 35 to leave an instruction he said he took two pens and gave the hotel host and said take care of him and whatever else you spend i will come back and repay you men whose heart god has touched they will pay your rent last year and come this year again and say are you stable now you say not yet sir and say don't worry i will still pay it men whose heart god has touched who needs those kind of people men whose heart i'm about to pray that prayer for you men whose heart i've seen a few of these kinds of people in my life and in all fairness most of you if not all of you are here because this happened to you you need these kinds of people in your life else as a man of god you will walk alone as a leader you will walk alone as a businessman you will walk alone or you will be surrounded by psychophants to a point where you will live in fear everybody is answering yes sir but the truth is that their hearts have not been touched they will sell you for 30 shekels they will sell you for anything at all judas even the brothers of joseph they were not touched even though they were his brothers when an opportunity came they sold him cheaply it takes beyond proximity for connection to happen god must touch the heart of a man maybe we should start with that prayer we'll start with this prayer and then connect to others whilst you are seated lord touch the heart of my helpers in this season touch the heart of anyone and everyone who is part of your prophetic program for me whilst you are seated make sure you pray outside pray 
businessmen pray maybe this is the miracle you came to church to receive lord touch the heart of someone where is the good samaritan who must show me kindness where is the good samaritan who will make prophecy happen in my life where is that helping ministry that helping business mama pray for your children where is the helper that god has positioned to lift my children some of them are in a foreign land void of help lord send to my life send to my family send to my ministry send to my home send to my job send to my destiny the man whose heart god has touched someone take a minute to pray you are investing in your destiny this is the school of prayer god answers prayer by sending men god answers prayers by releasing graces supernatural endowments that command physical results physical testimonies god answers prayers by granting you access to supernatural experiences someone pray the final arrival of all answer to prayers is the arrival of men they come with the gifts they carry they come with glad tidings they come with physical things they come with goodness they come with mercy men are an expression of god's goodness men are an expression of god's mercy men are an expression of god's prosperity your wealth is in the hands of men your favor is in the hands of men in the name of jesus go ahead and pray the land you will build on is currently in the hand of some man god needs to help you if god does not touch the heart of men you will live a defeated life someone is praying someone is praying in this season oh god i receive answers to prayer if it's a healing cry for a supernatural manifestation let that cancer die let that deliverance be perfected let this recurrent ill health give way once and for all let this blood condition go it is within your power to heal me and to heal me now heal me oh god and i will be healed save me and i shall be saved now go ahead and pray the resources of wisdom the resources of favor the resources of direction the resources of power the resources of the anointing the resources of honor let it rest upon me draw into my life physical testimonies testimonies of abundance and increase believers are praying two or three more minutes go ahead and pray Whoa. my help has come oh my help has come oh my lifting has come oh my help has come oh
has come. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. It is impossible to have your prayer life go down when you understand these things that this is the treasure that is hidden in a life of prayer that every time I commit to prayer I give God an opportunity to reveal his glory through my life imagine the things we miss when we do not pray and imagine the things we miss when we pray without understanding imagine the things we miss when we pray are miss that prayer is predicated upon the fact that your will needs to be active for your destiny and God's purposes through you to be actualized he made it so he gave you that gift and that gift had placed a mandate upon your life that you must always communicate your needs communicate your needs no assumption no presumption and I've taught you tonight that there are various assignments to prayer your growth and transformation obtaining requests in the place of prayer making decrees establishing spiritual realities I also taught you that the final assignment of prayer is for warfare and intercession I've taught you various prayer models make sure you take advantage of them that you can pray in the spirit Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Consistently growing. Molting yourself to a more powerful version. Are we together now? That you can pray declaring faith-filled declaration of scriptures. You can pray the prayer of inquiry. You can pray warfare. Warfare prayer. And you can pray with thanksgiving as the tool for receiving. Now I've taught you finally that when God answers prayers, these are the three channels for its manifestation. Number one, God answers prayers by giving you supernatural manifestations, like a healing miracle, like a deliverance. Are we together? Supernatural. It is instant, and yet, even though it's from the Spirit, you can have a physical expression. And then that God releases graces in answer to prayer, graces of wisdom, graces of favor, graces of power, graces of understanding, graces of direction, graces of honor. When you carry these graces, the graces have a mandate to draw forth physical circumstances, physical experiences that translate to your testimony. And that the final arrival of every answered prayer is through the ministry of men. They come in response to what you are carrying on your head. They come in response to something God has placed upon your life. And that for that to happen, God must touch their heart. Men can be aware of your need, but it does not mean they will respond to it. These are the men whose heart God has touched. Who has learned tonight? Go back and listen to this message. Go back and meditate upon this. Meditate upon this until your prayer life becomes richer and becomes fuller. I'll ask you to pray one prayer and then I speak over your life. Father, everything that has killed my prayer life i command it out of my destiny fan my prayer life back to life i need to be a believer with power a believer with results i intend to gain mastery in the place of prayer someone pray someone pray take a minute to pray prayer that translates to your prosperity to your advancement to your empowerment consistent unending results by the spirit you are taking a minute to pray. Fan back the ambers of prayer. Fan back your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we pray. Let me speak over you now. In the name that is above all names. I pray for someone. The encounters you lost as a result of the decline of your prayer life. May it resume tonight. The supernatural encounters that brought you direction, that made your future predictable. You knew things before they happened. You walked with certainty and accuracy, but you lost it as a result of a loss in your prayer life. Like the hair of Samson, I pray for a restoration tonight. I pray for a restoration tonight. I pray for a restoration tonight. 
I pray for a restoration tonight. The grace to pray in the spirit and to pray consistently. Receive it right now. The grace to consistently make faith-filled declarations. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. The discipline and the patience to pray the prayer of inquiry till you find direction for your life and destiny, I declare, receive it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit, the discipline and the discernment to engage warfare and intercession if and when the need arises receive the grace in the name of jesus receive the grace in the name of jesus and now i pray for everyone here who is sick in your body you are in need of a touch supernaturally may god answer that prayer now may god answer that desire now that you will walk out of this place healed you will walk out of this place delivered brand new organs to your body in the name of jesus i pray for you every grace every spiritual resource that needs to land on your head and to begin to attract strange testimonies to your life whether it is wisdom receive it be it favor receive it be it honor receive it be it understanding receive it in the name of jesus christ final prayer point i don't know whose heart god needs to touch this night I don't know who God needs to wake from sleep for your sake, for your sake, not to punish them, not to be evil towards them, but for your sake, that God will wake them like he woke Ahasuerus and cause them to open the book of remembrance. I pray for you. May God touch the heart of someone for your sake. May God touch the heart of a gatekeeper for your sake. May God touch the heart of your boss for your sake. May God touch the heart of a man of God for your sake. May God touch the heart of a wealthy and established man for your sake. In the name of Jesus Christ. My final prayer is that every spirit that has been assigned to attack your prayer life, attack your word study life, and make what you have heard tonight profitless and of none effect, I decree and declare, that those spirits are banished from your habitation banished from your habitation in the name of jesus now the time will come like you came a horse the body will submit to the dealings of the spirit all of a sudden while you're worshiping at the point you will find out scriptures begin to come mm, his majesty has stepped in scriptures all of a sudden god begins to speak to you some of us in the midst of that worship when it gets deep the spirit of prophecy oftentimes initiates the coming of the holy ghost all of a sudden prophecy comes and you begin to prophesy you are just praying in tongues you are in the presence alone with him all of a sudden you will start answering your own questions by yourself another spirit the spirit of christ has taken over you are praying all of a sudden you find out the pain is gone completely gone you are praying all of a sudden you find out that you could not sleep because you saw seven carryovers and you say what have i been doing in school and in that presence and the scripture starts coming fear not i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine when you walk through the water i will be with you through the river it will not consume you when you walk through the fire all of a sudden courage is arising you have exams but you've not read anything but in the glory you're worshiping you're a man of god you are preparing for your meeting and there is nothing to do see this is how i prepare for koinonia those who know me especially for the miracle service ah i come and i lie down flat and there's heavy worship well selected selected by spiritual wisdom and i just play it and i increase the volume enough to frustrate my body and i lie down there and as the glory comes all of a sudden visions are open 
and sometimes I'm seeing the things that will happen in the meeting let me stop there fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship the Holy Ghost loves singing when you sing to him whether in the spirit or in understanding you attract his presence notice every man of God that moves heavily in the anointing whether he has a good voice or not there is an affinity to music and deep worship I will follow the lion I will follow the lamb I will serve the lion I will serve the lamb the last point before we pray my goodness what is this that I'm seeing in the spirit I'm literally smelling a fragrance in the spirit literally literally I'm smelling a fragrance with my physical nostrils when you begin to smell things in the spirit it is called the spirit of discernment there's no time to teach you this but it is the manifestation of the spirit of discernment there are times many of you begin to pray and as you go deep you start smelling things scents in the spirit these were ancient Davidic patterns of worship the mysteries of the keys of David spiritual formulas that were used to invoke the presence of God hmm. number four the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life you want to see heavy dimensions of God's power and glory you cannot downplay the place of true holiness Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 by sacrifice there are certain things you will even need to cut they may not be wrong but you may have to cut them movies associations there are some things you may have to cut for the excellency of that which you want to gain in the spirit you cannot eat your cake and have it in the spirit believe me okay let me give you two more scriptures first thessalonians 5 22 1 Thessalonians 5.22 Hold up. Psalm 24 Verse 3 and 4 Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. And then 2 Corinthians 6 verse 7 All these scriptures point towards the fact that a life of purity and holiness has a lot to do with the presence of God resting and remaining upon your life the Bible says come out from among them and be ye separate touch not the unclean thing you must create boundaries in your life brothers and sisters do these four things again and again in your life and watch a giant in the spirit arise I don't care what the limitations are now fast and pray without compromise invest quality materials invest in the world invest in quality materials concordances in your uh, uh, bible concordances and so on and so forth take bible at least if you can lay your hands on get rich spiritual materials number three fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship you can buy a keyboard buy a keyboard or buy Jews five for life Come and give um what's Timmy? I almost said Ayo. Buy five for life and give to me and say to me, just play this for me while I record for 30 minutes. Here is the honorarium for investing your gift in my spiritual growth. And you are just playing it and soaking in the spirit. 
We are going to pray. We have 10 minutes to pray. There's no prayer point. We are just going to pray and cry in the spirit. Hallelujah. Gaining spiritual stature. Please everyone participate in this prayer. I see people standing outside. It's an opportunity to pray. Hallelujah. In the next five minutes, we are going to blast in tongues. We are going to cry unto God. Some of you, all you need to do is just to lie down and let this worship just soak into you. Whatever you have to do, you have five minutes. Go ahead and let's do it. Oh, sing in the spirit. Come on, do support it in the spirit. Do strength in the spirit. She pakara da balara ma si de da da na 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 Come on, press a little more for a few minutes. Lord, ignite the fire in us. Ignite the fire upon our spirit. We tap into the supply of grace. The supply of grace. The supply of grace. We rise beyond the flesh. We rise beyond the grip of the flesh. We are free from the lust of the eye. We are free from the lust of the flesh. We are free from the pride of life. The affinity for material things dies away from our life. The affinity for this world and all that it has to offer loses its grip upon our life. We become spiritual men, spiritually minded, spiritually minded. Even in prosperity, we are spiritually minded. In excellence, we are spiritually minded. When God blesses us, we are spiritually minded. We have no affinity to blessing. We receive them. We lose them. But we are never attached to them. Our attachment, our love, our commitment is to the Lord Most High and the purposes of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray.
pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that has corrupted your Christian experience, everything that you have struggled with, in the name of Jesus, this system of the Spirit will lift you above the grip of the flesh. In the name of the Lord Jesus, therefore I break the power of sin over your life. Sin has no dominion over you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of sin that leads men to fornication, the power of sin that leads men to pride, the power of sin that leads men to gluttony, the power of sin that brings prayerlessness, the power of sin that brings carelessness in spiritual things. I command in the name of Jesus Christ that that grip, that hold of sin is broken over your life now. I declare that you are alive unto righteousness. You are alive unto true holiness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I command that by the activity of the Holy Ghost upon your life, let sickness be far from you. You rise to a realm where SS can truly now change to AA. You rise to a realm where infirmity can no longer dwell in your mortal body. You rise in the spirit to a realm where curses and spells and yokes and enchantments can no longer have a grip upon you. You rise to a level where there is a limitless supply of wisdom, limitless supply of power, limitless supply of strength. This teaching brings you to a realm where God begins to do business through your hands. I pray for you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Your hands that are lifted, may they be instruments of signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon these hands that are lifted. From today, lay hands on the sick and watch them get healed. From today, I put fire upon your mouth. I command in the name of Jesus. Power comes upon your life. Power comes upon your life. Power comes upon your life. I administer the supply of the Spirit upon you. I administer the supply of grace. I administer the supply of strength. I administer a new order of miracles, a new order of signs, a new order of wonders, a new order of favor, a new order of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Receive grace for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Everywhere you go, everywhere you preach, begin to see a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. You will pray for men, they will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Your roommates will be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, you become an agency, a container of spiritual power. You become a bank of spiritual power. I invoke this from the heavens. Let it come upon your life. I place the word of God upon your spirit man. I stamp your life with the word of God. Hallelujah. And I prophesy upon your life that everything that was impossible, I declare that now that you have risen to a new spiritual plane, I activate possibilities in the spirit now. Hear me? There are many of you that have never seen visions before, but in this new plane in the spirit, I open your eyes now. I open your eyes now. I open your eyes now. I open your eyes now to visions in the spirit. I 
open your eyes. Let the spirit of prophecy come upon as many, as many, not prophetic office, not the office, the manifestation. Start hearing God. Share the voice of the spirit with clarity. I give your spirit to the frequency where the voice of God will thunder and echo upon your spirit without restraint. Hallelujah. I declare that this house becomes a place where men of the spirit are raised. In the name of Jesus. Many of you will sleep tonight and the Lord will give you divine solutions. He will show you what to do about your family problem. He will show you what to do about your academic problem. Hallelujah. Now very quickly before we take the announcements, lift your hands, let me speak over your exams. By next week, many of us are starting our exams. Father, in a way you have never done before, I know that you hear me when I pray. And I'm asking you to do something strange in this house. Review questions to people before they get to exam hall. I ask this as a request. In the name of the Lord Jesus, there are people, this is what you need to graduate. By the mercy of the Lord Most High, in the name of Jesus, I impart upon you grace to study. I speak to your CGPA. CGPA, it's time to share the word of the Lord. It's time to rise high. It's time to rise high. Those of you under probation, by prophecy, we bail you out of probation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command excellence in your exams. Those who did not do well in your assessment, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, you will see the wonders of God as you write your exams. No script to be missing. In the name of Jesus, I declare for many of you who the lecturers have had a track record of failing people this time around because your turn has come the heart of the king is in the hands of the lord i declare that their hearts are turned for your favor turn for your favor hallelujah as you study may the lord reward you in the name of the lord jesus very quickly you are here and you've never given your life to jesus christ you have not made a commitment before we continue i'd like to give you an opportunity we've spoken about three kinds of men probably you just walked into this meeting or you have been walking doing the things of god but you are saying i'm tired of my life i want a new beginning you may have even given your life to christ but you found yourself derailing you just found out that because of some kind of pressure you have left the way of the lord I'm giving you an opportunity wherever you are right now. Please, in the next... Pressure sends it um, a great interest and it would also interest you to know that we have you at heart. We consider you and we also believe in you. We believe in what God is doing in your life, what God is doing through your life. Are you a young minister? Are you into ministry? Are you a prophet whatsoever? Are you um, an evangelist trying to reach out to the nation? Are you a teacher of the gospel? Are you um, are you into business? Are you a counselor? Are you into an administrative sector? Are you an educationist? Are you into politics? Are you into part of the system that works for every nation, the government? Are you uh, into real estate or whatever the, your hands might, uh, might find to do? And currently you realize that you are being depressed. There is something you can't relate with someone. There is that situation that is so burdensome on you. Um, maybe you've told it to friends and they seem not to have solutions to it. Despite your hierarchy of position in your society, like the Bible spoke about Nicodemus, 
Nicodemus was a teacher, he was a ruler, Nicodemus was highly influential, but there was still something troubling his heart. And this he had maybe related with friends, but they could not find solutions to that. The Bible said even at night, Nicodemus sneaked and he went to meet Jesus. Once he met Jesus, the Bible said he said, Rabbi, he knew, Nicodemus knew that there is just one man who has the solution to his problem. And having met this man, he knew his problems would be over. That is why he said, Rabbi, Master. He knew he was influential. He knew he was in position. But he also knew that this one person has the answers to all his problems. That night was just one night for him. Similarly, like it is for someone like you watching us and had listening to God's word. Tonight is your night. Engage these words that you're hearing and get them in prayer. Don't ever give up. Don't say, oh, this society has made me believe this, that my problem, medical reports, said this is a terminal issue or health challenge. It can't be solved. There is no cure to it. I want you to trust and believe God. I've seen HIV being healed. I've seen cancer dying. I've seen the body womb conceive. I've seen the people without a womb, they give birth to children. They become mother of children. These are little and not limited to what God has been set or is set to do and has been doing over time. God is a God of impossibility. He specializes in impossibility. So I wouldn't want you to give up hope. I wouldn't want you to give up your plans and your faith in God. I want you to hang your faith, hang your trust. The psalmist said, I look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. I've been so long in the valley and every system put together in the valley seem not to be um, making or bringing to pass the potency, the reality of what God has spoken forth. I would like you to enjoy you to please stay tuned in this journey with us as we adventure into the very depth of God. Knowing what he has planned for our life and to see to it that our life become all that God has predestined us to become. Reflector Hub TV is designed to ensure that God brings forth his word through your life and by the mouth of his servant, Apostle Joshua Selma, that your life conforms to the very image, perfect plan, pre-designed plan of God for you. And we also like you because someone like you, someone who knows and the way to depression, someone who also feels like committing suicide might also be in need or should or is, must be in need of this message, must be in need of this video. Stop that suicide, stop that homicide, stop that murder case, stop that attempted um, abortion, stop that evil act in the heart of someone from coming to pass simply by sharing this video. To them, let it be that through you, by the mouth of his servant, Apostle Shoselman, that that individual over there gets saved and gets uh, moralized back again, is restored, and is living a sound life to the very glory of God. We like you to please subscribe if you are a new viewer on this platform, and don't forget to drop us a comment. We'll be delighted to have them because these are testaments that God is working in our midst. God bless you. We love you so much. See you in our next video.